Hi, perhaps you're familiar with the game here. I'm gonna pose some problems to you on the most recent Crash Course episode. This particular one is about friction and such. And then I ask you to work those problems and if you have any questions, you can look down here where there are solutions that I have made to the problems and you can see my thought process, uh, at least an abbreviated thought process. So the first thing I want you to note is this wonderful font, but I don't know how to say it. Um, in this problem, uh, <laughs> we address that Shinny has wonderfully convinced us that the vase will accelerate, but she left us totally hanging there. What is the acceleration of the vase? Well, let's find it, right? Absolutely. So I had to assume one more thing that mu sub k was 0.4. That's a little bit less than mu sub s because that is usually the case, that static coefficient of friction is greater than kinetic coefficient of friction. All right, in the next problem, I want you to imagine that you've just woken up, you've regained consciousness, and you're in a truck, <laughs> you look in the back, and all the boxes are labeled stolen Blu-ray players. The problem is, it's an El Camino, and the cops are coming. So you need to know what to do. Uh, also, the guy who is driving is slowing down. So uh, here you go. That should be interesting. Um, oh yeah, crime does not pay. This is my very favorite friction problem. It's so good, and you can't answer it correctly without understanding how static friction works. In this problem, I'm giving you three different forces that are acting on the same dang object. It's just sitting there, and you come up to it, and you push with 30 newtons, and then uh, you push with 45 newtons, and then you push with 60 newtons. And different things happen because at some point, static friction can't hold it anymore. So that's a fun problem to work through, and I think it will really tickle your innards. The fourth problem, and there are only four this time, is a graphing problem. You and a friend are pushing this bookcase and you push it harder and harder and harder and harder steadily. So your force as a function of time is just some straight line tending towards infinity gradually. Um, 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 but the force of friction might not be the same graph because eventually the bookcase is not going to be in equilibrium. I find that when you make a graph of a function it helps you so much more than when you just write the equation or even just manipulate the equation a little bit. Those things are good, but drawing a graph of a function can show you all kinds of awesome transitions, and that's what we're going to be trying to do here. This is a challenging question, and that's all I've got.